Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be doing some myth busting, some informative stuff. Basically we're going to be talking about tire pressure. Everywhere I go on the internet I see a lot of misinformation about tire pressure, particularly in regards to heavy duty diesel trucks. And so today I wanted to kind of address that head on, talk about how to figure out what tire pressure is right for you, what's safe, and what you should actually be running on your truck. So let's get into this. I'm Andrew and I'm setting out to make better videos for diesel enthusiasts. Follow along as I review products, do how-tos, and share my personal trucks here on Just Diesels. So the question of tire pressure really arises when you put aftermarket tires on your truck, which is what most people do, right? So you pick up your truck from the dealership, it has a junky set of tires. Those are usually rated somewhere, you know, on the door sticker, it's usually like 80 PSI rear, 65 PSI front, something like that on a heavy duty truck. Now, a lot of times what I see is people go and get aftermarket tires, right? They go out and get an all-terrain tire or whatever, and then they try and run at that same pressure, and that is not what you should be doing. So, today I'm gonna to talk about why you should be ignoring the door sticker on your truck if you have aftermarket tires, and what tire pressure you should actually have in your truck. So the basis of this has to do with what's called a load inflation table. Now that is basically fancy tire jargon for what pressure you should be running at your tire per a given weight. Now, weight ratings is a whole other separate video. I'm gonna talk about that separately. But load inflation tables basically tell you what tire pressure you're supposed to be running in those tires per the weight per tire. So, for example, if you look at Toyo MTs, here's the chart for a Toyo Mud Terrain tire. Now, I use this chart because it's easily accessible. A lot of the other tire manufacturers have these charts buried on their website, but this is gonna be a good reference. So if you're checking out this chart, Basically what you're gonna do is assume the front axle weight of your truck, the rear axle weight of your truck, and then divide that number by two so you know what's exactly on each tire, right? And ideally you would take your truck to a scale, weigh it either unloaded and loaded so you know what your pressure should be, you know, with the typical trailer that you pull and then empty, and then go from there. But most of us don't have a scale. And so what I'm gonna show you next is how you should figure out tire pressure and how I figure out tire pressure on my trucks without a scale. So what you're gonna to need to make this happen is ideally an air compressor, a piece of chalk, and then a tire pressure gauge. This is gonna be a very simple foolproof method. You can do this as many times as you want until you get the right spec. Um, and we're gonna go through and figure out tire pressure on my second gen because I haven't actually set this truck up yet. So what I'm gonna start by doing is inflating the tires. I'm gonna to go to 50 PSI front and rear. So that's well below the door sticker on this truck, which is supposed to be 65 and 80. Um, but what that's gonna be is a general guess of where I should be at on these tires. Now this truck is on a 35, 12 and a half, 17 Nitto Ridge Grab, but this is an E load range tire with a load rating, if I recall off the top of my head, somewhere around 3,500 pounds per tire at the max PSI on the sidewall. And my truck is not operating anywhere near that kind of capacity, right? This truck is mainly just empty. And so what I'm chasing here is one, proper tire wear and two, proper ride quality. And tire pressure is gonna play a huge role in ride quality. And I, Talked a little bit about this in my video, it's called stance versus off-road, but basically the more sidewall you have, the better your truck's gonna ride, but tire pressure is also gonna be a huge component of that. So you could have 17s and 37s, but if you're running them at 65 PSI and your truck's empty, your ride's gonna be horrible. So your tires play a really critical role in absorbing all of the small impacts, taking the edge off of square impacts, they're really gonna be the preliminary suspension in your setup. So even if you have crazy suspension, like my trucks have pretty nice suspension on them, tire pressure will make it so that that suspension rides horrible. And, and that's gonna be true across the board, no matter what suspension's on your truck. Adjusting your tire pressure is a free way to improve the ride on your truck. So that's why this is so important to get nailed down. The second thing I mentioned it just a little second ago is tire wear, right? If you have your tires overinflated, you're gonna be wearing the center of your tire and not the edges because it's gonna be ballooned out. And so what happens is you're wearing through your tires prematurely. If you spent a lot of money on tires, you wanna get the full life out of them. So what we're gonna do is try and figure out exactly what this tire should be run at. So now that I've inflated my tires to about 50 PSI front and rear, I'm gonna drive and find a nice flat section of road to go and test this on. Out here uh, grabbing dinner with my girlfriend, but I found the perfect Beyonce. road. Oh, Thank yeah. you very much. Sorry found the perfect road to film on, so we're gonna use this to do the chalk line test. So I've got my piece of chalk. I can already tell that these are overinflated in the back because there is not wearing on this outer edge here. But I'm just gonna make a nice line across. Now tell me what's going on there. We'll do the same thing up front here. Nice line all the way across. Center here, we're overinflated because we're getting nowhere on the side. 
you notice that your tires are wearing more in the center than the edges, you're gonna to wanna to drop pressure. If you notice that your tires are wearing more on the edges than the center, you're gonna to wanna to increase pressure. So that's what we started high. And what your goal here is, is to start with a higher pressure and then slowly drop that pressure incrementally down until you're getting close to even wear. Now, you'll never get perfect wear all the way across because these tires aren't designed for that. That would be more of like a bias ply tire. So the radial tire, what you want is actually just a little bit more contact in the center with just the edges not quite touching. So that's really what we're chasing here. You can see a really good example of this. So if you look at the front end of this truck, this is what perfect wear is on one of these trucks. So if you look at it, it's just slightly more in the center than the edges, but it's a really nice even wear across the whole tire. So it's that this is like perfect pressure. If you look at the rear of the truck, that's gonna be just a hair over inflated. So you'll notice the tires on the very, very edges aren't touched at all. So we want just a little bit more wear there, um, but the center is gonna be perfect. So right now on this truck, I have 43 front and 35 rear. So what I'm gonna do is drop that down to about 40 front and 32 rear, and that should get me exactly perfect. And that's gonna sound really low, right? When you're looking at the door spec on this truck, it was for 80 PSI in the rear, and I'm running 32, is that right? You gotta think though, this truck is empty, right? And so this is what is so important about this, is that when you look at the manufacturer door sticker rating, that is so that you can leave the dealership and haul the max payload spec and max towing spec on your truck. No one's doing that, right? That's something that you do not, not commonly. I mean, unless you're a hotshot trucker, right? Then you're gonna run the door sticker. But for most of us, we're just weekend hauling, things like that. So those numbers that are on the door sticker, even if you have your stock wheels and tires, don't really matter because you're not fully loaded all the time. And so this is really important. I see a lot of people saying that it's not safe to run lower pressures. It's perfectly safe. It's actually what you should be doing. If you are running such a high pressure, you're not getting proper contact patch on the road, you're not getting proper traction, that's gonna impact braking, accelerating, especially in inclement weather, right? If it's snowy out or icy out and you're running 80 PSI, good luck trying to get any traction on the road. And so this is why this is so important. So yes, it helps ride quality, but two, it's really gonna help overall performance and, and traction and grip in your truck and overall safety of your truck. Yes, it does impact fuel mileage a little bit. The higher pressure you run, the better your fuel economy is gonna be, but I prefer better ride quality to a slight hit in fuel economy. Now, the final thing I wanna to touch on is TPMS systems. Now, this second gen has no tire pressure monitoring system, right? I can drop the pressure to two PSI and the truck wouldn't say anything. But if you have a newer truck, say like a newer Ram or a newer Ford, those will send a light off if the pressure drops below the factory threshold. There are ways to fix that. So on the Ram trucks, AEV makes the ProCal system. There's a software program for Windows-based laptops called Alpha OBD. You can change the TPMS thresholds easily and quickly using those. For the Ford trucks, there is a lovely program called Forscan, F-O-R-S-C-A-N. Don't get your mind all twisted. Forscan will let you do that same thing for the Ford's trucks. Uh, so you can go in there and change the TPMS threshold. It's literally as easy as going in and telling the truck have the light go off at 32 PSI instead of 80 PSI. Please don't think that the TPMS light has to stay on. I see this as a common misconception. This is very easily edited. Search it on YouTube, tons of how-to videos. You can get your truck dialed in. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped all of you figure out what tire pressure is right now. My truck is different from yours. Everyone's gonna have a different tire pressure spec. And so that's why this chalk line test is so helpful. If you're looking for a starting point, I usually recommend starting at like 50 PSI and 55 PSI in the front. Uh, that's gonna be like a good starting point. You know it's gonna be too high and you can drop down from there. Typically what I'm seeing on most trucks, like newer diesel trucks that are a little bit heavier, is that 45 front and 40 rear is a really good point uh, for that truck to be at. So if you want just like a set it and forget it pressure where you don't even have to do the chalk line test, 45 front, 40 rear for a new diesel truck is gonna be perfect. Because my second gen is a lot older, it's a lot lighter, that's why the pressures on that truck are so low. If I was doing this in say a 2020 Ram, the pressures would be probably about 45 front, 40 rear, somewhere in there, but those trucks weigh thousands of pounds more than the second gens do. So take this with a grain of salt, but it's definitely worth the time to figure out exactly what pressure you should be running in your truck to get optimal ride, optimal tire wear, and everything else. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped out. And uh, let me know if there's other videos you wanna talk about. Definitely gonna be talking about load ratings and tires in an upcoming one. So thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next video.